Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Eight eight three five five nine, or view it in the news section of the company's website, www.rada.com. I would now like to hand over the call to Mr. Ehud Helft of GK Investor Relations. Mr. Helft, would you like to begin, please? Thank you, operator. I would like to welcome all of you to this conference call, and thank Rada's management for hosting this call. Earlier today, RADA released its results for the fourth quarter and full year 2019. By now, you should have all received a copy of the press release, which is also available on RADA website at www.rada.com. With us on the line today are Mr. Dov Sela, Chief Executive Officer, and Mr. Avi Israel, Chief Financial Officer. Dov will summarize the key highlights of the quarter, followed by Avi, who will provide a summary of the financials. We will then open the call for the question and answer session. Before we start, I'd like to point out that the Safe Harbor published in today's press release also pertains to the contents of this conference call. And with that, I would now like to introduce Swada CEO, Mr. Dov Sela. Do we go ahead, please. Thank you, Eud. Good day to our call participants and uh, welcome to our uh, fourth quarter and full year uh, 2019 results conference call. Uh, let's start with the results summary and, gui and guidance. Uh, obviously, we are very pleased with our uh, uh, Q4 results, especially with the strong growth in the revenues, which surpassed uh, 40 million, the highest ever in RADA's history, and up uh, over 71% when compared to the fourth quarter of uh, 18. For the year, our revenues were uh, over 44 million, 44.3 to be exact. Uh, up 58% over last year, the highest ever in our history, and the head of our full year uh, target, which uh, started at 40 and then um, updated to 43 million. Furthermore, even while we significantly increased our uh, OPEX in uh, 2019, due to the high investments in our uh, US presence and the development of uh, our next generation radars, uh, the very strong revenue growth and stable gross margin throughout the year enabled our EBITDA to become positive in the second half of the year. In early January, we issued our uh, guidance for 2020. We expect our revenues uh, to, ex to exceed 65 million, representing over 47% uh, growth in 2020. Uh, furthermore, we expect that RADA will continue to grow on a sequential basis through a quarterly sequential basis throughout uh, 2020 on the top line, which implies we will surpass the break-even point and grow profitability during the year. This type of growth is the fruit of the seeds we planted uh, in the past few years as we aggressively invested in uh, new radar technology. It also shows that our uh, markets, both in the U.S. and globally, have now uh, awoken and are aware of the offering, especially counter drone and point defense, while active protection is still in the uh, uh, waking up stage. Bottom line, we, have, uh, we are on track, and what uh, we have been looking forward for many years has finally arrived. <clears throat> Let's talk a bit about the general picture. The interest and need uh, for the solutions in which our radars are key parts is global, and considering the, the addressable market size, we believe this is uh, just the beginning of a sustained growth period. The second half of uh, 2019 has indeed been the start of the transition from the initial stage to the growth stage. Market behavior in the U.S., but not only in the U.S., other places, including Israel and elsewhere in the world, is beginning to see uh, these new capabilities, which uh, our radars are enabling as critical for defense needs. We therefore see programs moving from the fulfillment of urgent needs to multi-year acquisition programs, which should enable us to start building a backlog along the 2020. 
um, about our sales progress. As many of you know, in the United States, we are currently targeting a number of programs. Mm -hmm. Let's start talking about the, uh, the Bradley Active uh, Protection Program. We are uh, at the heart of IMI, LBIT IMI, Iron Fist Active Protection System, which is in process of being installed on the U.S. Army's Bradley uh, Infantry Fighting Vehicle. And I would like to touch briefly on this program, which has been in the news lately. Uh, there are three phases to this program. The first one, characterization, was completed in 2018. The second phase, qualification, is ongoing, planned to be completed within a year. And the third phase is production for the 1st Brigade. The original plan was to start equipping a 1st Brigade by the end of 2020 in parallel to qualification. The project has been pushed back by two years and is now planned to be performed in sequence. We do hope that successful qualification has the potential to bring the schedule forward, but currently we cannot, uh, uh, we, do, we don't see formally uh, something around that. I want to highlight that even while this uh, project has been delayed, it was planned to first Im impact our uh, revenues in 2021. At this stage, we see some other programs that are being brought forward in the UN, U.S. and elsewhere that will compensate for any of these uh, delayed revenues. Uh, we estimate the market of radars for APS systems at about uh, $3 billion in the coming decade, split evenly between U.S. and the rest of the world, and we feel uh, very, well po very well positioned right now. Despite the breathy delay, we stand, uh, we stand by and feel uh, even more confident with regard to our 2020 expectations than we uh, were a few months ago. Uh, another program is the short-range uh, air solutions, short-range air defense solutions for the Marine Corps and the U.S. Army. Uh, we estimate uh, that the short-range air defense market will be a $2, million, $2 billion market over the coming decade also split evenly between the U.S. and the rest of the world. We are currently serving the U.S. Army Iron Shore program, uh, providing uh, protection for four battalions, uh, air defense battalions. We are also providing systems to the Marine Corps uh, ground-based air defense program. In addition to the APS and Shore, uh, to the maneuver force, base and point defense have been becoming uh, recently a clear need mainly since the hostile attacks in the Near East uh, by Iran and uh, its allies. Beyond uh, what ha has been delivered to date, we see significant uh, upside from follow-on orders to the initial orders that we have delivered in the last two years. Our pipeline continues to broaden with significant prospects. Potential orders are especially strong in the U.S., while other international markets are increasingly growing. Let's, uh, uh, before concluding, let's talk a bit about the coronavirus and its effect on our business. Um, as of now, it had uh, no impact on our sales and deliveries since we do not uh, use Chinese parts or material on one hand and maintain uh, inventory levels to support immediate needs on the other hand. However, if current uh, travel restrictions continue for an extended period, it will likely have an impact on our business development efforts. Um, that may have an uh, effect uh, maybe later this year and uh, into 2021. We also assume that the situation in China may affect uh, availability and price of uh, global supply chain as demand for non-Chinese parts and materials may rise and cause allocation of supplies that we consume. Uh, all in all, we do wish well to all those uh, impacted by the virus and hope, uh, as all of us are, that the global situation will stabilize soon. Uh, in summary, these are exciting times for us, um, finally reaching the stage we have uh, been planning for for quite a while now. We have mature solutions with a strong performance over price advantage versus competition. In view of the opportunities ahead, RADA is positioned for significant growth after investing in our production infrastructure both in USA and Israel. Our leading radar technology, which keeps evolving, 
addresses the demanding needs of uh, this growing market uh, for the coming years. And overall, we are very pleased with our performance in 2019 and look forward to continue growth in 2020 and the, the years to come. I'd like to, uh, now to hand over the discussion to Avi Israel, our CFO. Avi, please go ahead. Thank you, Duby. Uh, good morning to our U.S. friends. Good afternoon to our Israeli ones. Uh, you can find our results on the press release we issued earlier today, and I will provide a short summary of the fourth quarter and the full year results. Fourth quarter revenues were $14.4 million, up 71% year over year. For the year, revenues were $44.3 million, up 58% year over year. Our gross margin in the quarter and the full year was at a stable 36% of revenues, the same as reported in the Q4 of last year, as well as in 2018. This is the level we currently expect and are happy with. As you know, we continu continue to make significant investment in 2019, especially in R&D and marketing, as well as our infrastructure in the U.S., so our operating expenses grew. We expect operating expenses to stabilize, at around current, uh, around current fourth quarter levels throughout 2020. Operating loss was 209,000 compared to 102,000 in the uh, Q4 of last year. Operating loss narrowed from $494,000 in the prior quarter. For the year, we reported an operating loss of 2.1 million versus an operating income of 62,000 in 2018. Net loss attributable to shareholders for the quarter was $295,000. This is compared with a net loss of $86,000 in Q4 last year and $686,000 last quarter. For the full year, net loss attributable to rather shareholders was $2 billion versus $163,000 last year. We reported a positive EBITDA for the quarter, 587,000 versus 401,000 in Q4 of last year and 105,000 last quarter. Full year EBITDA was 407,000 versus 1.8 million last year. I would also like to summarize and point out some highlights from our balance sheet. As of December 31st, 2019, we had $13.8 million in cash and no financial debt at all. On January 10th, 2020, we significantly strengthened our balance sheet by raising approximately $23.5 million from investors in the U.S. This is after expenses in a secondary offering in the United States. At year-end, our shareholders' equity stood at $41.4 million, financing 64% of our balance sheet. In summary, as Dov mentioned, and as the financial results demonstrate, we are very pleased with our progress and on track. That ends my summary. We should now open the call for questions. Operator, please. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time we will begin the question and answer session. If you have a question, please press star 1. If you wish to cancel your request, please press star 2. If you are using speaker equipment, Kindly lift the handset before pressing the numbers. Your questions will be polled in the order they are received. Please stand by while we poll for your questions. The first question is from Ken Herbert from Canaccord. Please go ahead. Hello, uh, uh, Doug and Avi. Hi. Hi, uh, Avi. I just wanted to ask you first um, for the uh, 2020 outlook. You've, you've indicated that you expect quarter to quarter some sequential improvements, both in in revenues and in profitability. As we think about the revenue line, can you maybe provide a little more granularity on you know maybe sort of specific first quarter or first half, or or maybe a little more parameters around how exactly that acceleration will take place over the year. As you can see, uh, our fourth quarter can uh, is uh, is uh, we, we reported 
14.4 million dollars in revenues and based on the current pipeline and maturity and uh, backlog and so on uh, we can uh, point out where the revenues will come from especially in the first half uh, nevertheless we are working in this kind of environment for the last uh, two to three years so we developed our internal mechanism uh, to identify the right potential and matureness of the, the pipeline. So yes, we, considering the fact that we are, you know, mid-March already, we know what the revenues uh, numbers will be in uh, Q1. Uh, we have enough pipeline and backlog for to support uh, uh, continuous growth in Q2, and we have the, the necessary pipeline to support uh, continuous growth in Q3 and 4. So we believe that the 65 that was reported uh, is, uh, you know, quarter by quarter will show growth and will achieve the 65 that we reported. Okay, uh, that, that's helpful, Avi. I guess maybe one other way to think about it is last, in, in 19, first half revenues were roughly, you know, 42, 43% of the full year. Um, is that sort of mix or that acceler the, the cadence there maybe the, the right way to think about it? I believe so. I believe that you are correct. You are not uh, highly mistaken. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Great. Um, and if I could, you um, obviously, you know, a little bit of sounds like push to the right on on Bradley and active protection. Um, can you just maybe go through a little more detail, uh, Duby, on on sort of the next milestones on that program and and where you maybe see risk over the next year to two as you move in, you know, from the qualification phase, ideally to, to production in the future. But, but what are the next key milestones on, on the Bradley APS system we should be thinking about? You know, it, the, the qualification is a, is a process uh, that starts uh, very soon. I mean, we are working on that together with IMI continuously, but uh, there are, uh, you know, gateways in front of the customer tests and demonstrations, it starts uh, here in Israel soon, in, in, in a few weeks, then it goes to the United States. This is why this process takes, uh, takes uh, let's say, a year, and uh, you know, at the end, uh, or even interim uh, uh, conclusions, I, I don't think we will see any specific milestones un milestone, uh, until it is declared as a success, hopefully, and that's what we are here for. Uh, and and uh, you know the b biggest milestone is to get the the, the enough uh, funding by the U.S. Army to upgrade the Bradley to version four that will enable the installation of uh, of the iron fist on the Bradley. So probably within a year you will see you know uh, favored notifications coming from IMI mainly. Okay, okay, that's helpful. Um. And just, just finally, um, as we look at the new facility here in, in Maryland in the United States that's ramping up, um, can you just provide any more detail on how that's going? It sounds like obviously everything is going well and you just sort of produced and tested the first articles there, but certainly, you know, you've got, you, you've got a lot of investment you put in and ramp up there. What kind of cadence should we expect out of that facility this year and, and just any more, more commentary on how that's ramping up? Uh, currently, we plan to deliver uh, over 200 radars to the U.S. market from uh, our Germantown facility, and if we are lucky, even more. Uh, the, the ceremony of the first uh, radar, uh, you know, launching uh, was done uh, two weeks ago uh, with the presence of the Maryland, uh, a Maryland congressman. Is that wrong? Uh, everything is on track. I mean, we thought at the beginning that we will be able to complete everything by end of last year, but we took into account that it may, be, may slip to the first quarter, and we are here. And uh, very soon, uh, hopefully this, re uh, not hopefully, but the plan is that uh, uh, by the end of this month, we will start delivering radars to customers from our Germantown facility. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for the color. Thank you. The next question is from Brian Kinslinger from a 
Alliance Global Partners. So the, next, the next question is from Brian Kinslinger from Alliance Global Partners. Please go ahead. Hi, great. Thanks. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Um, I think the problem with the Brady, uh, the Bradley, from what I read, was not enough power to support the Iron Fist. Do you have uh, other programs where you see this as a potential issue? I guess you've had a couple of wins, and I'm wondering if that power of those vehicles has been evaluated given the lessons learned. To our best knowledge, yes, mainly since these are new vehicles that uh, were upgraded uh, before the decision to select the active protection and they took uh, the requirements of uh, active protection and modern requirements into account. You have to remember that the Bradley is a veteran vehicle that uh, sooner than later the, the U.S. Army wants to replace it and they call it uh, OMFV. So I think the situation of the Bradley is unique. Okay. And, and you mentioned um, funding for the Bradley as maybe the, ri the one risk, um, and I haven't really read up on that. Is uh, there a contention on whether that would be funded for this fiscal year or not, or is it in all likelihood expected to happen? Uh, formally, it will not happen this year. I see. That's why it's two years now, not one. Yes. Got it. Okay. Um, in your original guidance, I'm curious, um, although it's unchanged, was there some benefit in the second half of the year for this, and can you quantify that? No, no. Okay. Um, on the other hand, we have we do have a few other APS contracts that you announced for Iron Fist. So I'm wondering, would there be a contribution that you can quantify at all that's expected in your 2020 guidance from APS programs? Um, and then should we expect a significant ramp in 2021? Uh, I don't expect it to, to, to be significant in 2020. It is still in, in the low quantities of, uh, you know, uh, uh, five here, ten there for uh, prototypes mainly and testing. And since we are, uh, uh, we have been selected and potentially going to be furthermore selected to in production of new vehicles or upgrades, then these programs are prolonged and they spread over a few years. So significant revenues will start only in 2022, really. Got it. Okay. And then um, I'm wondering for maybe the fourth quarter, uh, we've talked about it, you know, different geographies. Can, can you break down roughly, I don't need the exact, percentages of where revenue is by geography compared to maybe a year ago? Uh, it is uh, very similar in geography compared to the year ago. You know, U.S. is about uh, around 50%. Maybe it will increase this year a bit. Uh, Israel is a big chunk, uh, mainly, you know, to export through integrators, but still. And the rest of the world is... Uh, Gradually increasing, uh, it's about, you know, uh, 30%. Oh, 30% is not so small. Yes. Um, and then, um, you know, to the first question that was asked, uh, and this is my final question, um, based on what you know, uh, as the quarter is almost done, um, is the first quarter expected to be stronger than the fourth quarter in terms of revenue? Is it more even, or is there seasonality that makes the first quarter uh, step back from the fourth quarter. What we can say is that the fourth quarter of 19, which we just announced, is a baseline to the sequential growth that we expect quarterly along 2020. Great. Okay. Thank you. Sure. The next question is from Scott Huntington of Bodell Overcash. Anderson and Co. Please go ahead. Good morning. I have a couple of questions here for you this morning. Um, first, uh, congrats on, on Germantown. And I was just wondering regarding Germantown, um, as you ramp up, uh, are your break evens going to be similar to volume in Israel? And when do you anticipate the volumes? Uh, uh, being sufficient to allow you to be break-even? Break-even? Uh, 
break-even company wise or no 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 the US installation oh uh, you know the US installation should uh, <laughs> should become uh, profitable this year beautiful thank you and and in past releases uh, and and I'm probably guilty for not uh, trying to frame the window a little better, but you had mentioned uh, four new products that anticipated being released uh, the first of the year or after the first of the year, and, and uh, of course, the guy sitting in my chair, he likes to think it's January 1st, um, but that was never stated by you folks. I'm just wondering how the um, uh, new products are moving along and when we can anticipate uh, a release of such. Uh, one was already released, uh, it was a radar for APS, uh, along 2019. Uh, three more will be released uh, end of 2020, and not later, by mid-2021. Alrighty, thank you folks. Thank you. The next question is from Michael Bursick of National Securities. Please go ahead. Hi, guys. Uh, two real quick questions. One is um, with what's been going on in China, etc., I assume it doesn't affect your supply chain at all? Uh, your assumption is correct. Okay. It's good to have it on paper. Um, secondly, uh, now that the Germantown facility is going to be up and running, um, is that going to take away from capacity in Israel right now, and how will that affect overall margins? Um, first of all, uh, the growth is not only in the United States. It's about 50%, so we do believe that uh, the the load in Israel will not be reduced because of the U.S. ramp up, and it will uh, stabilize at uh, even quantities. Uh, what was the second question? Uh, no, it was the, that was it. Just the overall margins. So you you the answered it. Margins are at the corporate level, and uh, we do we do do not expect uh, this to change. Great. Thank you very much for the answers. Thank you. If there are any additional questions, please press star 1. If you wish to cancel your request, please press star 2. Please stand by while we poll for more questions. There are no further questions at this time. Mr. Sella, would you like to make your concluding statement? Thank you, Peter. Um, Excuse me, there is, there is an additional question. Would you like to take another question? Yeah, sure. Okay, there's a further question by Scott Huntington of Bodell, Overcash, Anderson & Co. Please go ahead. Yes, I'm, I'm sorry for jumping back on. I just got thinking a little bit about the three releases uh, scheduled for later in, in 2020. And I, I wonder if that has been scheduled all along or if, there, if there's been a snafu or delay or is everything rolling along according to game plan? Everything is as planned. Beautiful. Thank you for that. Mr. Sella, would you like to make your concluding statement? Yes. Uh, on behalf of the management, I would like to thank you for your interest in our business. We look forward to speaking to you and updating you next uh, quarter, and uh, have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. This concludes the RADA Electronic Industries fourth quarter and full year 2019 results conference call. Thank you for your participation. You may go ahead and disconnect.